The canvas allows us to draw on our web pages using JavaScript. In this chapter, we're going to take a look at the drawing API that the canvas exposes and how to use it to create interactive custom elements on our pages. Now, HTML is great for creating documents, forms, and pages, but it lacks the ability to perform freeform drawing. Plugins like Flash have filled the gap, and there have been some creative demonstrations of drawing using normal HTML elements. The latest generation of web technologies, HTML5, has now provided us with two ways of drawing elements onto our page, the Canvas and SVG. The principal difference between Canvas and SVG is that Canvas is based on drawing pixels onto a surface, and SVG is about defining persistent vector shapes that can be manipulated like other DOM nodes. Now the Canvas is a lower level API than SVG, and is great when you really want full control over the contents of your Canvas. Now using the Canvas we can draw simple shapes, special curves, interactive elements, we can integrate the Canvas with DOM elements of our page, for instance this box and this box are both divs, but a transparent Canvas lies between them to draw this curved line connecting them. We could also create games like this snake game, which uses the canvas to draw the snake and handle all the animation. Now the first thing we want to do when working with a canvas is create a canvas tag on our page. You can see we're doing this here with a canvas tag, and we're giving it an ID so we can grab it from JavaScript, and we're also giving it a height and a width attribute. The canvas is based on drawing in pixels, so the height and the width are very important because that determines how much pixel area is on the screen. Now on this page I've included jQuery for my convenience, but jQuery is not required for the canvas, and all of my code is in the canvas1.js file. So if we go to canvas1.js, you can see that I'm starting off with the dollar sign function, which means that all of the code that is in this page is going to be executed after the page loads. And that's important because we need to get a handle on our canvas, and if our code executes before our canvas is on the page, then none of our code will work. So here I've used the dollar sign convenience function in jQuery. Any other document loading event would work. So the first thing I do is grab our canvas, and I'm doing it with jQuery for convenience, and I'm grabbing my canvas, and I want to make sure to get the actual HTML element, not the jQuery object. So I'm grabbing the first element out of this jQuery object. Now from the canvas, we need to get a drawing context. Now this is generally abbreviated as CTX as a convention, but you can call it whatever you want. Now to get the canvas, we call canvas.getContext and pass it 2D. Now to be compatible with older browsers, we need to first check if the .getContext method exists on our canvas element. Now if it doesn't, we want to go down and do some sort of fallback behavior, like either alerting that the browser is not compatible, or maybe displaying some fallback content like an image. So we get our context by calling getContext with 2D. There are some technologies on the horizon like WebGL which allow us to draw on the canvas using a 3D space, but for now we're just going to be doing two-dimensional drawing. So let's look at the page in our browser right now. Now what I've done is I've added a border using CSS to our canvas. Now without any styling, a canvas is completely invisible. It'll take on whatever background is behind it, and it has no border. Adding a border allows us to sort of see where the canvas starts and stops, but you don't need to have it. Additionally, anything that was behind it, like a background image or any other HTML elements, will be visible through the background, so you can see this gray from the page is displayed through our canvas. Now the context is where we do all of our drawing. All the methods and attributes will be called on the context object. Now there are two attributes, fill style and stroke style, which are very important. The fill style will be the color that will be the fill of any of our shapes, and the stroke style will of course be any of the strokes. Now these are persistent, so any shapes that we draw immediately after this will take on either the green fill style or the cyan stroke style but we can change this at any time. So the first method we're going to look at is the fillRect method. So to use it, we call fillRect on our context object, and we pass it an x, a y, a width, and a height. So in our case, it should be drawn 10 pixels to the left, 20 pixels down, and 100 pixels wide, and 200 pixels tall. Now since we're calling fillRect, our rectangle will automatically be filled, and since our fill style is green, it should be a green rectangle. So let's save it out and test it. And we can see our rectangle is displayed on the canvas. 
Now just like there's a fill rect method, the stroke rect method works just like it, except instead of filling, it strokes the rectangle. So here I've created a differently positioned rectangle, and it should stroke with a cyan stroke. So let's save it out and refresh, and we can see our stroke. Now we can change the fill style at any time, so in this case I'm changing our fill style to an RGBA color. Now our fill style can be any CSS color value, so that's RGBA, RGB, HSL, HSLA, or any other CSS color. So in this case I'm creating a red using RGB and creating the opacity of 0.5. Now I'm going to call fill rect and we should see a transparent red rectangle. So you can see our rectangle here, and you can see a transparent, so it's taking on the pixels behind it. Not only the shapes drawn on the canvas, but anything behind the canvas as well. Now there's one more kind of special rectangle we can do, and that's a clear rectangle. And what that does is everything inside of that rectangle, all the pixels on the canvas will be cleared. So let's take a look at how this works. Again, this takes an X, a Y, a width, and a height. So let's save it out. And you can see that all the pixels here have been cleared. We're not drawing a gray rectangle, we're actually deleting all of the pixels here. Now, if we wanted to clear our entire canvas, we could do it very easily using a clear rect with an X and a Y of zero and a width and a height equal to our canvas. So if we do that, we have cleared out our canvas and we can continue drawing again. Now this is important in things like animation when we want objects to move around we'll need to redraw our entire scene. Now there's another way we can clear the contents of our canvas. And that's because anytime you set the height or the width of your canvas, it'll clear out all of the contents. And you don't even have to change it to a different value. So if we were to say canvas.width, and we're doing this on the canvas element, not the context, and we assign it even the same canvas width, we can see that when we refresh, all of our contents have been cleared out. So that's a little bit of a quicker way to clear the contents of our canvas. You can draw more than simple rectangles using the canvas. In the next video, we'll look at how to create polygons using paths.